Welcome, Larry Sparks here from Destiny Image. I've got two dear friends with me, Pastor Bill Johnson and Miriam Evans. And one of the things I want to talk about today is a subject that I know is very dear to all of our hearts, and that is the glory of the Lord, the manifest presence of God. And before we even go, I was telling Miriam today, I do a lot of interviews, but I don't like interviews. I like times where Holy Spirit comes and ministers and speaks. So for all of you who are watching, listen, at any time, this can be interrupted by what God says and does. Miriam, Pastor Bill, as the Lord gives you any words, just look at your camera and release it to the folks at home because this is for you. This is not just us talking about a message. This is us capturing what is God saying and doing right now. So... Pastor Bill, I want to ask, because people talk about the phrase, the glory of the Lord, or the glory of God, and I'll never forget years ago, I was in a service, and the choir sung a good song, and somebody was like, I felt the glory of God, you know, I was was weeping, and it felt good, and and, and that's good, they probably (laughs) felt a measure, but when we talk about the glory, what is that, if you could quantify the glory of God? Oh, goodness, Uh, for for me, I always define it as the manifested presence of Jesus. Mm. And he manifests, obviously, in, in levels and layers and measures, you know, because if, let's be honest, if the full measure of God's presence were manifest, none of us, our physical bodies could withstand that, that glory. Yeah. Um, you know, even uh, Moses, the Lord put his hand over his eyes uh, as he walked past, so he would just see his hinder parts. And so there's measures that we can, that we can handle. But, but the point is, it's the presence of God. And it's that it's that manifested presence of God that is so profoundly impacting. And the thing about the glory is that more stuff happens in the glory that is changed and transformed yeah. than you could ever bring about through your hard work and discipline and the things that are essential for our life. But in the glory, everything changes. And even as we're having this conversation, I mean, I have, I have these books with me because I want to talk about some of the subjects in them. But Miriam, you just did this book, Glory Miracles, yes. and you're talking about things that happen in the mm-hmm. glory mm-hmm. and a phrase you use, accidental miracles, yes. mm-hmm. like things that take place <laughs> when the presence of God is there. But people might be wondering, okay, you've got Bill Johnson, Miriam Evans, what's the connection Well, the connection is you and your wonderful husband, Tommy, were out at Bethel for four plus years at really Mm -hmm. ministering with the wonderful team here. What did did. you learn while you were here at Bethel with Pastor Bill about the glory? Yeah, we really learned how the glory comes from rest, Mm. that the Father wants us to experience his glory more than we want it. Yeah. And so I feel like that's where the phrase came, accidental miracles, because things would happen that we sometimes felt like, I didn't have anything to do with that one. You know, but it's just when his presence begins to invade earth, just as Pastor Bill Mm. has preached on, that's his message. His message, the, the house of Bethel, the message of heaven invading earth, has actually, it's actually tangible. It's not just something that they talk about. We experienced it, not only my husband and I, but our children. As a matter of fact, the first weekend that we moved to Reading is when the glory cloud manifested. (laughs) And it was such a physical sign that we were at the right place at the right time. And we knew our family's marked for glory. Mm. And so since then, we've just been like, God, like we wanna take the example that Bill and Benny, you know, forerun for for so many generations, they pioneered yeah. this, and just how wonderful everyone does here at Bethel. Lord, we want to do the same. We want to multiply that for a generation, and I believe that's what has happened with us. Is like we saw the glory of the Lord in the glory cloud. Yeah. We felt <laughs> the 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 weighty glory of God, and we were transformed. Yeah in the glory of the Lord. You know, during some of these meetings that we were attending here at Bethel, my husband and I can tell you, like, we literally would go from glory to glory to glory. And sometimes it was, no one prayed for us. No one laid hands on us. No one uh, came and, and maybe even said anything to us, but because the glory of the Lord, the presence of God had a place to dwell, he had permission 
we were completely transformed in that. And so now we're finding, praise God, we're thankful that in our meetings, we're seeing the glory of the Lord transform people where I mentioned accidental miracles, blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, no one's laying hands on them, no one's saying a proper prayer over them, but our goal is just to give them a place to rest. And we learned that here. Well, as you're saying that, I'm just so stirred. And again, I don't believe in hype or manufacturing. Because <laughs> yeah. I sense, though, the glory of the Lord here rising, yeah. increasing. For those of you watching, I actually want to say something that Miriam says often. You have permission yeah. to be healed. Like, I yes. strongly believe even in the conversation that we have about the glory. Yes. People are going to be healed. You need to know that you have permission at any point in this video to be healed. Yeah. Share in the yeah, comments. Yeah. And then the last thing, John Kilpatrick said this. You know, sometimes what we talk about or what we magnify mm-hmm. increases. Mm-hmm. And he said, when you talk about the glory. When you talk about the glory yeah. of God, even like we're doing right now, yeah, yeah. it increases. And yeah. I sense that. Um, I do want to I do want to f- focus just for a moment on the glory cloud. Because yes. people are thinking, okay, these manifestations and stuff, it's profoundly biblical. Yes. Um, and I was here for a time when I remember Eric, your son, his wife was supposed to lead the service. <laughs> it was on a Friday night. She couldn't. Because God manifested himself yeah. in the form of a cloud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, people will criticize or whatever. All I saw was increased awe, fear, yes. and worship. What, what fruit would you say has come out of not just the glory cloud phenomenon here, but when people experience that measure of his presence? You know, when you experience that, it's hard to be satisfied with, with anything else, you know, to be honest. He, he rewires you. He recalibrates you for what's possible. Yeah. And I don't mean just the physical manifestation, because mm-hmm. uh, there are times where his presence will sweep through the building in such a profound way, but there's no, you know, the cloud kind of thing. None yeah. of that's happening, but the impact is still still deep. And I, uh, what you said, awe, I think that's probably mm-hmm. the number one the w- number one thing is the awe gets re- restored to the church. Yeah. You know, we, we just... Uh, um, the presence of God is is often just treated as too common. We become overly familiar. Mm-hmm. Bobby Connor says we become too familiar with the God we hardly know, wow. and uh, and that's really really what I see happening as that glory increases. There's such a a, a holy reverence, an awe, a fascination, a wonder. Uh, I would watch the children, and the children would literally, with their eyes yes. wide open, mouths wide open, they'd run into the middle of this thing that God was doing. And I, I was so I was so moved by that. I thought, man, I don't know what to do. And then I thought, oh, I think I just follow them, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the kids, because they just had yes. this fascination with with God. He's he's the everlasting Father, yeah, wow. the Prince of Peace. Yeah. He is the God of all wonder. Yeah. Um, and and that's what the glory does. Is it recalibrates you to who He really is? Well, and I love one of the key messages that you carry. There's one that heaven invades earth, but uh, it, you have the conference, Open Heavens, mm-hmm. this yeah. new book, yeah. Open Heavens, about encountering the God of revival. I love what you teach because there are many people who are trying with noble intent to open the heavens with their prayers and fasting yeah. and all yeah. that. And, and, and I get that because there's hunger. But I love that you teach we are, if we're born again, filled with the Spirit, we are under an open. It's true. We we live under. How, what does it look like? I mean, just to steward the open heaven that we already have, because somebody might think, well, I have that connection with God, but I live in a city that's dark, or I live yeah. in a family yeah. that's challenging. How do I steward that to see that open heaven increase? Whatever you give attention to will increase, yeah. good or bad. Yeah, Whatever you exercise will increase, faith or unbelief. Mm. Mm. You can develop whatever muscle you want. Wow. And yeah, I owe it to him to live aware of him. That's what he said. Abide in me, and my words abide in you. Then you ask whatever you want. Then you're in a co-laboring role to co-labor with the Lord to see his purposes accomplished on the earth. Yeah. But it starts with abiding in him. It's a felt realization of presence. So if it's true that I live under an open heaven, and I'm in a neighborhood that's very dark and evil... And if I stay conscious of everything that's wrong, I will live in reaction to darkness. 
I won't live in response to truth. Mm. Jesus did not live in reaction to the devil. He lived in response to the Father. So he did what he saw his father do. He said what he heard his father say. So he lived conscious of the open heaven over him. We know there was an open heaven because it says the heavens opened. The Spirit of God came upon him in the form of a dove and remained. So there is this constant ongoing fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the Father. Yeah. And there was this openness that he had that he stewarded. And so it starts, in, I don't know if it starts, but one of the things that, that helps us is to stay conscious mm. of him. Because if I, if I feed myself all the wrong stuff that's going on, you know, you, you feel heavy hearted and you can, you can call it intercession, you can call it a burden, you can call it all kinds of spiritual things. But what you're doing is you're digging a hole for your own faith. Wow. And it's hard to climb out of that. Mm. So staying aware of him doesn't mean ignoring problems, but face them with him, not separate. Don't do it for him. Yeah. Yeah. Face the challenges with him. And uh, so I think it starts there. As you're saying that, I would love for you, Pastor Bill, to just pray for the folks who are watching right now. Because as yeah. you were talking about that, there's a lot of people. I mean, right now in the world that we live in, there's a lot of opportunity to come under all of the darkness, yeah. the swirl, the anxiety. It's being yeah. bombarded at us. Yeah. But I really believe, as you were talking about that, the Lord wants to increase awareness yeah. of the presence of God that we carry, yeah. the Holy Spirit who we have intimate relationship yeah. with. And I think Apostle Paul never prayed a prayer saying, God, would you open the heavens? But he prayed prayers, would you open my eyes, open the eyes of my understanding right. that I would know right. yeah. what I've already been given. So would you pray, Pastor Bill, then yeah. we'll go to, yeah. to you, yeah. Miriam. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, Father, increase our awareness of your presence, of your heart, that your living word would be profoundly active in us and help us to be able to follow well what Jesus illustrated for us, only doing what he saw you do, only saying what he heard you say. Mm. Let that be uh, the standard that we embrace for our own lives and help us to never again be impressed with the devil, mm. never again be impressed with what he has done to where we live in reaction to him. We want to be ones who respond to you, represent you well. So I ask this in Jesus' name. Yes. Yep, so amen. Good. Amen. Miriam, as we're talking about increasing our awareness of what God is doing, increasing awareness of the glory, because the reality is if we are born again, mm -hmm. the glory of God, the presence of God lives inside of us. Yeah. But in this book, you actually talk about, I love how you break up the chapters into kind of different focal points that really help increase our awareness of the glory, the mm -hmm. manifestation of the glory. I mean, one of them here is honor. And I, I even think all of us being together, generations being connected, Pastor Bill and Miriam, I mean, there's an honor there. But what, how does honor actually increase the glory? Mm -hmm. Wow, I just, um, well, when, you know, the Bible says in Psalms, I can't think of the exact reference, mm -hmm. but it talks about when we honor uh, one another that it's like the anointing oil that dripped from Aaron's beard yeah, yeah. and so I just really believe that when we are looking for the person of Jesus in the people that we do world the you know do life with yeah. and, and and people that God puts us with um, that there is a gate of glory that opens up because sure. God honors honor, yeah. if that makes sense, yeah. you know? And um, so whether it's honoring someone um, in, a, in a generation that's gone before us or like I believe Pastor Bill, you do such a good job with honoring like people in my generation and younger, like yeah. you were saying about the children. He honored the children and was like, I'm doing what they're doing. I'm following what the kids are doing. And this mutual honor of honoring the person of Jesus yeah in the person in front of you, I believe there's there's mm. a, a magnification yeah. of who God yeah. is that happens, a greater mm. manifestation of God's presence that happens because we're honoring him and others. Yeah. And I, I feel like he honors that when we honor That's others. True. Well, and I'm going to have Pastor Bill talk in yes. this as well because as you're talking about that, I was even just thinking about a conversation we had today about an old book called The Real Faith by Charles uh, Price. Yeah. And it made me think of all of these people, I mean, you have quite a few of them listed in your book, Miriam, you've quoted people in your book, Bill, mm -hmm. people who have 
impacted and blessed all of our lives. I think of Smith Wigglesworth, Catherine yes. Coleman. Yeah. Um, I think of so many people who have John G. Lake, Ruth Ward Heflin, yeah. honoring the unique manifestation of the glory of God through each of them. And, and, and you know, it's easy for us to stum sometimes stumble over, you know, idiosyncrasies, eccentricities, so areas maybe where people <clears throat> didn't end well. But how do we navigate that, Bill? Because I think honor is really key to receiving from some of these ministries. It is. It's, it's a way of life. First of all, every person deserves honor because they were made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Every human being. Every person deserves honor because they've been given gifts or abilities by God. That's every person. And then believers deserve honor because the Spirit of God dwells in them. You know how much God trusts us by what he entrusts to us. Mm -hmm. And so if he entrusts himself to us, then he's confident in the work he's done in mm -hmm. us. If he's confident, I better be confident. Wow. It doesn't mean the people I'm working with, myself included, are free of blunders and mistakes and getting it wrong. But, you know, you don't, you don't punish you know, a one-year-old child because he only took three steps and then fell. Mm -hmm. You celebrate the three steps. Every one of us as parents are cheering yes. them on yeah. because they took, now they took eight steps. Did yeah. you see that? And the celebration is over the success, not over the fact that they fell. In fact, we don't even talk about them slipping and falling, you know, not being able to do something well. And uh, and the way that we're supposed to live in the kingdom is is that. it's It's the celebration of the effort of the the progress, the, the, the encouragement, you know, uh, Paul, I'm sure was a challenge for Barnabas, uh -huh. uh, in his, in his early days, but Barnabas was the, was the son of encouragement, the, the, the one that was the champion of encouragement for him. And that's exactly what a great man like Paul needed. He needed in his beginning, that kind of voice to keep him to keep him encouraged and strengthened in all that God called him to do. So I, I just think the thing of yeah. honor is huge. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. attracts the Lord, it does. It attracts the Lord. And uh, that means that we celebrate what God's doing, not what he hasn't done. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. celebrate the three steps of success and not the fact that they stumbled and fell. We celebrate the fact they got up again. And yeah. and it's just, it's how you do life. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're meant to receive from one another. Mm -hmm. And it's not... I'm not overly exaggerating a great leader. I'm actually receiving what God has deposited in them. That's true. It's not celebrity status. It's what has God yes. said to them? What has he entrusted to them? Because I want to receive. But if yeah. I'm operating from dishonor, it shuts down that ability yeah. to receive. Yes. Um, Jesus, if, if I can yes. insert, I'm sorry. Yes. Jesus actually warned about this subject when he saw his own hometown not receive from him. Hmm. He said, a prophet is not without honor. So prophets get honor. A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown. So what's the issue? The prophet carries great anointing, great ability to impact everybody's life under his influence. But honor, the absence of honor, kept them from receiving the gift that was among them. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to actually illustrate it. He said, uh, you know, we're naming the, the leper and, and the widow that received uh, the ongoing supply. Yeah. So we had a miracle and we had provision that were not given to the house of Israel, even though it was from the prophets who were in Israel. They were actually taken outside of Israel and given to Naaman and given to this, this widow because of the absence of honor. The whole point was, Israel, you had this stuff going on in your midst. You had leprosy. You had a financial need, you had crisis, and you weren't able to receive from those that were among you because of the absence of honor. So God displayed it outside the nation of Israel. Mm. Just to illustrate, wow. this is how you tap into the provision of the Lord. And he says, a prophet is not without honor. And then it says that uh, those who honor a prophet as a prophet receive the prophet's reward, which receives what the prophet has to bring to the table. Yeah, yeah. And if there's not honor, then I have, if I honor a prophet as a good brother, then I receive a good brother's reward. Hmm. But I don't receive what the prophet brought. Yeah. Because honor determines what I receive. Wow. 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 And it's interesting so what contributed to the dishonor there was this oh, isn't that the carpenter's son? Yeah. yeah. It's this yeah. familiarity, yeah. which it's we were a, just yeah. kind of going back to even talking about the glory cloud, manifestations yes. of glory. That's meant, I believe, to demolish 
familiarity yeah, exactly. yeah. and restore Absolutely. that Amen. awe. Yeah. And, you know, Miriam, yes. I'm just thinking of miracles you've seen, mm-hmm. miracles your eyes have seen, which I believe that there's a grace in your book to really equip people to walk in this. This is available for every believer yeah, to walk in the miraculous. Yeah, absolutely. But testimony does stir up. Like, what have you seen God do in the glory? Like one notable miracle you've seen happen <laughs> in the presence of God. Okay, yeah. Um, there was a young boy that came into our meeting who was blind in one eye due to being abused as yeah. a child. Wow. He had suffered um, blunt forces to the head as a young child, and and he was later adopted Mm. by um, a couple. And his adopted father brought him to the meeting, and due to the brain injuries that he had suffered, not only was he blind in one eye, but he also had a disability where he had to be, um, you know, helped to walk because after so many steps, he would just kind of like fall to the ground. So running Mm. was not an option for him and um, so his father brought him into the meeting and my husband and I had you know we saw them come in we saw how his dad was helping him walk to his seat and things and so we we're just having our worship service and you know we were up at the front just worshiping the Lord and just really stewarding the presence of God and in the corner of my eye we saw this same child running up full force, no help, running, running up to the front, (laughs) ran up on the stage where we were and leaped off of the stage towards the crowd. He did that probably like three times. Well, his dad runs up and he's like, you don't understand what's happening. You don't understand. And these are great interruptions, right? Like we don't mind these type. Please interrupt (laughs) us, you know? And so I looked at his dad. I said, come quickly, quickly, tell us what's happening. And his dad got up there and he began to talk about the abuse that he suffered as a young baby yeah. and, um, you know, the repercussions of that and what he could not Jesus. do. And the boy's eye popped open, like just, wow. I mean, not only was he running, but at that moment, God opened up his eye and he began to cry out, I can see, I can see. And his dad's like, he can't even talk that well. Like the whole yeah. thing. Wow. Well, the place, you know, that was that was the service. I mean, the place erupted, praises went up, yeah. miracles started happening yeah. like popcorn. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you from backs to, I mean, it was just, it was wonderful. It was glorious. People wow. came to Jesus that night, you. you know. Um, and later, as I was talking to the young boy, he was down on um, his knees and he was just worshiping the Lord. And he came over and he gripped my leg and he said with tears in his eyes, he says, the memories are gone. Mm. He said, the memories of what happened. And I just wept and I thought, Jesus, not only did he uh, heal him, but he was delivering him from trauma and he was renewing his mind. And it just was so wonderful, and um, that's what God does. Like He just, like you said, everything changes in the glory. Yeah. I mean, everything changes. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I'm not opposed to therapy, so please let me preface before I say what I'm saying. But but when the glory comes, yeah. 30 years yeah. can be healed in yes. 30 seconds yeah. in the glory, yeah. in yeah. three minutes in the glory. Yeah. And and I know God's done that in my life where I've been delivered, set free. You know, things that I came in with, I didn't go out with them yeah. because the glory of the Lord. You need to release that. Yeah. I actually feel like the Lord is setting yeah. people free yeah. right now, yeah, totally. particularly emotionally, trauma. But you just pray yeah. for the folks. Yeah, so yeah. God, we just thank you for the testimony of Jesus yes. right now. That it just prophesies to every viewer. Lord, we just pray right now, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory, that you would just begin to hover over Mm. every viewer right now in Jesus' name, that the glory of the Lord would begin to dwell in every home right now over every viewer. And may the glory of God just Mm. deliver you from trauma. May the glory of the Lord bring healing to your body in Jesus' name. May the glory of the Lord open up blind eyes right now and open up deaf ears and dissolve tumors and cancer. May the glory of the Lord open 
I just, I even feel blood disorders right now are being healed in the glory of God. I, the Lord delivered me of a prescription drug addiction while watching the television. And Whoa. someone had a word of knowledge. I believe God is delivering people right now from addictions of all kinds. Holy Amen. Spirit, we just ask that you would come and that you would bring a mighty visitation of glory yes. and a deliverance and a freedom. And most of all, that your perfect love, that your perfect love would cast out fear, that your perfect love would just begin to transform people in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Yeah, yeah. Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord. Pastor Bill, uh, as we're finishing up, although I hesitate to want to finish up because, again, as we talk about him, as we share about the testimony, yeah. his presence just increases here. Yeah, and I believe true. as people are listening, they're getting touched, they're getting healed, they're experiencing that weighty, tangible presence of God. Yeah. Can you think of a notable miracle <laughs> you have seen in the glory, in the presence where nobody really had to do anything? Um, and that somebody was healed or set free. Well, we've we've just had so many things happen, just literally in in the presence, in yeah. the glory. I love it when He gives us a chance to lay hands on people and prophesy and be involved. But <laughs> you know, He sometimes likes to do it on His own. You know, a, w- a woman who had esophagus cancer. You know, and her, she had heat come on her hands during worship. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how she connected that to the esophagus cancer, but wow. but she turned to her husband and said, I've just been healed. And so they went to the doctor. The doctor said, this kind of doesn't go away. The examiner says, not only is the cancer gone, you have a brand new esophagus. Wow. We've wow. had uh, people, I remember one gentleman visited us from another country, and he, he had a very, very athletic uh, man, uh, but he had to quit all sports because of a very serious injury to his shoulder and uh, back area and arm. And uh, and as the service was beginning, somebody somebody spilled hot coffee all over his shoulder, and he was pretty upset about that. And he turned, and there was no one there. And then he realized he had just been oh healed. It was actually word. the fire of God that wow. came on his shoulder and arm. And you know, it happens. Uh, a gentleman who uh, um, uh, dyslexia was a pastor. He had to listen to tapes of scripture. And, and uh, he, he wasn't able to read because of very, very extreme and serious dyslexia. Wow. And uh, just literally in, in that moment, it was called out, and he was, he was so dramatically healed that he went from overnight, from not being able to read, he would read six and eight hours a day. Wow. wow. And uh, it, was just, it was just in that he could feel the presence just coming on him. And he, had a, he confessed to me, he says, I had a real bad attitude about being here. People had encouraged him to come, and he really just came to get it off his list and yeah. get people to stop bothering him. And he realized in the middle of the miracle of what he needed to repent of, he said, God, please don't let my bad attitude yeah. stop this. And that glory would come, wow. and he was just restored. So, you know, the list goes on and on. That's people uh, that uh, in, in the environment didn't need their glasses anymore. Yeah. You know, Jesus. just just all of a sudden they can, you know, they can, they can see. And it, it, it's, uh, it's unending, you yeah. know. And he has he has so many creative ways of doing it, which is so fun. You know, he doesn't he doesn't seem to do <laughs> he doesn't seem to do it the same way yeah. twice yeah. ever. You know, which is That's which is yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hot coffee, and it wasn't coffee; it was the presence, it was the presence but, yeah. of fire of God. Yeah, yeah. Well, as we as we finish up, uh, Pastor Bill, I'll probably have you conclude in yeah. prayer because I do <laughs> feel that the yeah. Holy Spirit's still touching people. Yes. Yeah. And I want to encourage you with this because sometimes we use this phrase. You know, it's a dark place, or that's a dark city, or it's too hard. And I actually felt like the Holy Spirit told me recently, there's no such thing as a dark place with the glory. Yeah. There's no such place because if, listen, it's not call, a call to reach people with gimmicks or formulas or that type of thing. Yeah, there's strategies and all that, and that's fine. But I believe the Lord's raising up people who will carry the glory. Absolutely. Live under an open heaven operate in these glory miracles that you've written about. Mm -hmm. And I really believe, Pastor Bill, I mean, you know, you live in California. I'm seeing right now God move powerfully in New England. Mm -hmm. These are typically written off as hard Mm -hmm. places, Mm -hmm. but God is on the move. Yeah, we cannot afford to be impressed by how hard a place is. It just will not come out of my mouth. Yeah, so good. I cannot cannot affirm the enemy's success of deception. 
because the gospel is always greater. Yes. Mm. The light, light, yes. uh, darkness only exists where there's no light. And he said, we're the light of the world. Yeah. He said, you don't take a, a, a light and hide it under a, a bushel. You, you put it in the open. So if it's dark in the room, you get the light out from yeah. under the bushel because it's, you know, it's our responsibility. Arise and shine. It's a commandment, not a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness covers the earth. Yeah deep darkness the people but his glory is upon you yes and then he goes on and he says kings will come to your light nations to the brightness of your rising so we've got literally world leaders and nations themselves come to the light of the gospel when we refuse to lay down mm -hmm. and be overwhelmed by circumstances, yes. but to rise in the power of the gospel. So, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, and again, for the folks watching us, we're yes. finishing here. Yeah. You might feel like you live in what you call a dark place, a dark city, it's challenging, or just might be in a season that's very difficult and challenging yeah. in your life. But the good news, whether it's a city or territory, or something, a sickness, or something that you're coming against, yep. there is mm -hmm. nothing too hard for the glory and the presence yeah. of God. Um, would you would you just yeah. pray for our friends yeah. who are watching? <laughs> Absolutely. Help us, Lord. Just yes. help, help us. Help us yeah. as we navigate these mm -hmm. very unusual seasons, yes. these very unusual yes. times, to live conscious of you, to live feeding from you. In fact, I don't want to pray this. I want to declare it. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that we'll be led forth with peace. So we're, we should go nowhere peace doesn't lead us. So I'm asking, Father, that you cause us to be conscious and aware of the, pre, the peace of God, the presence, the person of peace that leads us throughout our day, throughout our life, and that we would come with great confidence into every environment, every situation, not because we understand, but because we know you, because we're devoted to you, who is king of all kings, Lord of all lords. And I ask for this, uh, this family of believers. Uh, that you would uh, help us to rise in great strength and represent you well and just never again be impressed by the devil. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want to encourage okay. you. Miriam Evans has written a new book, Glory Miracles. Hello. Pastor <laughs> Bill Johnson wrote the forward with yes. Randy yeah. Clark. Yeah. And <laughs> Pastor Bill Johnson has written Open Heavens, which really is about Great living book. aware mm -hmm. of the presence yes. of God that we cool. carry inside of us. And I love it about positioning yourself to encounter the God of revival. Yes. It's Jesus who lives inside of us. Amen. It's Jesus who moves through us and equips us to walk in those glory yes. miracles. So, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Pastor yes. Bill. Yes. Yes. Always yes. a joy. Yes. We'll see you again yes. soon.